Hello everyone, welcome to another WordPress tutorial. In this lesson, we'll be learning how to manage links to and from parent and child pages, or in other words, top level pages and sub pages. If you're new to WordPress and unfamiliar with the term parent page or child page, here's a quick explanation. WordPress makes it very easy to link pages together so that your visitors can see that there's some sort of hierarchy or structure or relevancy between the pages. So for example, you might have an about us page, but maybe you have enough content that you want to separate it into a mission statement page and an our future page and an our history page. But the key fact is that they're all intrinsically related to the about us topic or parent page. So in this case, we can see that these dashes indicate that these pages are children of the about us page. It's incredibly simple to assign a parent to a page. If you click on the page that you want to edit, you'll see that under page attributes, there's a drop down menu defining what the parent should be. So now you can imagine how incredibly useful it would be to have WordPress automatically output a list of relevant children links depending on the page you're currently on. So you can see if we navigate to about us, we can see the children pages. And then even if we click on one of them, we still have this nice navigation, which is letting us know that we're in the about us section. And here are the different sub pages we can choose. Now, obviously looking at a finished product isn't very educational or helpful. So behind the scenes really quick, I'm going to go ahead and remove this sub page child page navigation menu. And then the remainder of this video, we will be working together to rewrite the code to make it possible. So you will learn all of the PHP, HTML, and CSS required to add something like this to your theme. So let's get started. I just removed all of the code that was outputting the parent child navigation. So we're starting together from square one. So let's take a look at our code. In this case, we're working with the page.php file in the theme folder. And we want to add a bit of code right before the title. So right above this title. So the new code that we will add looks something like this. Drop into PHP. We want to use a WordPress function named WP list pages. If we refresh, we can see that a list of every page on the website is being output, which we do not want. We only want to output links to children pages uh, relative to the current page that we're viewing. So right now we're viewing the about us page. That means that really only these three links that I just highlighted should be showing. So we need to adjust the WP list pages function and give it a bit of options or parameters so that it understands to only show pages relative to the currently viewed page. So within this WP list pages function, we'll provide some options or parameters. We'll say args, which is pointing towards an array named args. So let's create that array. Args equals an array with a few options. For now, we only need one option. Uh, we will use more in the future. So child of and then we want to specify the current page being viewed. So to do that, we'll get the post and then we'll get the ID. It's that simple. So now if we refresh, we can see that only children pages of the currently viewed page are being shown. Let's go ahead and remove this pages keyword that WordPress is automatically adding. We don't want that. So we'll simply include another option in this arguments array. Uh, let's say title list item equals nothing but an empty quote. <laughs> so if we refresh, we can see that that is now gone. Now we've laid the foundation for our children links with our code. And I wish it was this simple, but it's actually a little bit more complicated because you can see that if we actually click on one of these children links. So now that we're on our future, the children links have disappeared. And that's because our code is saying, get the children of the currently viewed page. And obviously the children pages don't have children of their own. So instead, we need to customize this child of options value a little bit. So instead of post ID, we need a way to say, get the topmost ancestor of the currently viewed page. Now, as of the filming of this lesson, there's no built in WordPress native function to do that for us. So instead, we're going to create our own function. And we can name our function anything we would like, I will name it get top ancestor ID. So now that we invented a function name, we need to write the code that actually powers the function. So open up the functions.php file in your theme folder, go to the bottom of the file, and we're going to create a comment that says get top ancestor. 
Okay, and now we're gonna write some new code to power this function. Function get top ancestor ID. Okay, now any code between this bracket and this bracket will run when this function gets called. So now it's time to write the actual meat and potatoes for this code. But first, let's ask ourselves what we need the function to do. What do we need it to return? We simply want it to return the value and in the form of an ID number of the topmost ancestor page relative to the current page being viewed. So that means if we're viewing a parent page, it can simply return its own ID value. But if we're on a child page, we want it to return the ID of its parent page. So we're gonna set up an if statement. So we'll say if the current page has a parent, do something. Uh, but if it doesn't, then we can do something else. So if the current page does not have a parent page, so if it's the parent page itself, we simply just wanna return the ID of the page. It's that simple. But if a condition is met, so if the page does have a parent, so we'll say if the post has a parent, we want to return something else. So in this scenario, we're looking to simply get the ID of the topmost page. Now WordPress has a neat function named get post ancestors. Now the issue here is that it's not doing exactly what we want. This will actually create an array with the parent, the grandparent, the great grandparent, the great great grandparent, but we're not looking for an array. We're looking for just a single value. So what we can do is create a variable and store this array inside the variable and then say return that array but we only want to return the first value in the array now we're almost there but not quite remember when I said that get post ancestors this built-in WordPress function that it will get the parent ID the grandparent the great great grandparent well it stores it in an order so that the first value is actually just the most direct parent instead of the topmost parent. So when we're saying only give us the first value in this array, what we actually need to do is reverse the order that this array is storing the orders in so that the topmost ancestor is the first value. So all we need to do is simply wrap this value, excuse me, uh, this function inside another function named array reverse. Okay, now we just need to make sure that when we're saying post, we need to make sure that that variable is available from within this function. So I'll go ahead and make that available. So now if we refresh, even if we go to a child page, our navigation still stays in place. So our children links are now complete. We'll worry about styling them so that they look nice in just a moment, but for now, let's give ourselves another functional goal. We also want to output the name of the topmost parent page above the child links. So we want the phrase about us to sit above these children. So let's head over to our code. We will go into page.php. So we can see that this is where the children are being output. So directly above that, we want to include the link of the topmost parent page. So we'll create a span class of parent link, and then we'll output uh, the name and the link right here. So the permalink will go here in just a moment. And then inside uh, this hyperlink element, the title will go. So we need to write a little bit of code that uses this function that we just created that gets this relevant ID number and then displays the correct title. So we'll drop into PHP and we'll use the WordPress function named get the title. So now all we need to do is use that ID that our function returns and place it inside this get the title function. So we'll say get top ancestor ID. It's that simple. Now we also need to do something similar in the hyperlink so that it is a link to the about us parent page. So we'll say PHP echo and we'll use the WordPress get the permalink function. And then again, we'll just use our function that we created ourselves. So we'll say get top ancestor, oops, ancestor ID. Now if we refresh, we can see that there is a link to the topmost parent page about us. So we're currently on the mission statement page. Now we're on the our future page. And now we'll always have this link uh, near the children links to go back to the parent page. So now the heavy lifting for the most part is complete. We can move on to the fun part, which is the CSS, the styling, making these links look good. Uh, so let's clean up our markup a little bit. Let's clean up our HTML before we head directly into CSS. 
So let's add an entire wrapper for all of these ch children and parent links. So we'll say nav with a class of site nav children links clear fix okay and then we'll indent all of this and then obviously we'll close this nav section another thing to note this wp list pages function it outputs the children links each one inside a list item but those list items need to live within an unordered list so we'll include that and then we'll close the tag here and then we can indent this code to stay organized Okay, so now our HTML has a bit more structure, so our CSS can play off these different elements. So if we refresh, we can see that things already look a bit better just by adding this class of site nav to the nav element. Now, in a previous lesson, we created this class, and all it does is it removes the bullets and it floats the list items so that they all sit on a single line. But let's take things a step further and set up the styles that you saw in the very beginning of this video where the links are spaced out, the about us sits on the left, and then the current page gets underlined. So let's go ahead and set up all those styles. So let's hop over to our style.css file, scroll to the bottom, and we'll create a new comment, and we'll call it children links. Okay, so we'll start by creating some space around the children links so that it's not touching the content below it. And also let's make the font size a little bit smaller. So that already looks a little bit better. Now let's work on some of the spacing uh, between each link. Children links, list item, margin right, 20 pixels. That already looks a lot better. Now let's adjust the styles so that about us sits to the left of the children links. So we simply want to float children links parent link remember that's the class that we gave to the parent link uh, so we'll float it to the left we'll add a bit of space to the right padding and margin 20 pixels will give it a very subtle border one pixel solid and we've been using this very light gray it's very subtle uh, let's also make it a bit larger font size since it's the parent section and it can also be bold. And then let's go ahead and float the children links as well. They sit in an unordered list, so we'll float that. Okay, so now if we refresh, you can see that the layout is really starting to take shape. Let's give ourselves a few additional goals. Let's remove the underline from the links, and let's make the parent about us link dark gray instead of blue. So to remove the underline, it's very simple. We'll just target all of the links within the children links section. So children links, text decoration none. And then we also wanted to make the parent link use a dark gray instead of a blue. So we'll take this selector, target the link within it, and color dark gray. So now if we refresh, you can see that those changes are now in place. What about an active state for these children links? So if we click on our future, we have no way of knowing just by looking at the navigation which page we're on. So maybe we should set up some styles so that we add an underline or a bottom border to whatever page we're currently on. So if we hop over to our CSS, create a new selector, children links, current page item. So WordPress automatically adds a class of current page item to the list item, the LI, uh, to the relevant page that you're currently on. So now we can simply say border bottom, to, uh, one pixel, light gray. Uh, we'll make the color not blue because it's the page you're already on. So let's make it look a little bit less enticing. And for those users that are using a desktop or a laptop instead of a smartphone, let's change the cursor so that it's the default pointer instead of the hand that looks like a link. So if we refresh, we now have some sort of indication that this is the page we're on. Now you'll notice when we're on the About Us main page, in the main navigation, it's lit up, About Us. But when we go to one of the children pages, it doesn't stay lit up. And I think it would make sense for it to stay lit up even on the children pages. Now fortunately, WordPress makes this very simple to adjust. Let's head over to our CSS file. 
Uh, we'll search for site header. Here it is. And we're looking for the section, aha, current menu item. So if you remember in an earlier lesson, we learned that WordPress automatically adds a class of current menu item. So that's what we see when we're on the about us page. Well, WordPress also adds a different class for when the current ancestor is being viewed. Uh, I might have phrased that wrong, but you'll see in just a moment. So header nav current page ancestor. Whoops. So now, if we go to one of these children pages, you can see that About Us stays lit up because WordPress is automatically adding a class of current page ancestor uh, when any of these children pages are being viewed. WordPress knows that they are associated with About Us. Now at this point, our lesson is almost complete, but there's one final edit we must make to our code. So if we go to Contact Us, it's a different page, a different section entirely, but you can see that even though this page doesn't have any children or subpages, our children link menu is still trying to output itself. So we need to add a bit of logic to our code. We need to wrap this code in conditional logic that's saying only output this code if the currently viewed page either has children or is a child itself. Otherwise, just do not output this code. So we'll begin with an if statement. We'll drop into PHP. We'll say if this page has children or if it is a child itself. So if the current post has a post parent, then include this navigation. So I'll drop out of PHP, paste this navigation into the, the if statement that's running and we'll close the, P, uh, the if statement and then we'll drop back out of PHP. Okay, now I must say that has children is not a native default WordPress function. We need to create this function ourselves. So we're gonna head over to functions.php and write a function named has children that will take care of that logic for us. So we'll hop over to functions.php, go to the bottom and we'll add a new comment that says, does page have children? And this is where we'll create our new function. So it's called has children. Okay, and our code, the meat and potatoes, will go between these brackets. So the first thing we wanna do is make the global variable, excuse me, make the post uh, variable accessible from within this function. And then we're just gonna use a bit of magic from the get pages function. So WordPress has a function named get pages get any pages that are a child of the page that we're currently viewing. Okay, so now let's store this and this function uh, returns an array. So let's store that array in a variable named pages. And then we just want to be aware of what that number is, how many items are in the array. Now the reason we want to return this numerical value, the number of pages that are a child of the current page, is because if it's zero, if a page doesn't have any children pages, zero will evaluate as false in this if statement. But if this function returns any number that's larger than zero, then it will evaluate as true, which will work really nicely for our if statement logic. Now really quickly, just looking at this code, I'm realizing that we forgot to open uh, the if statement bracket. So let's add that and let's test out our function. So we can see that now that we're on the contact page, since it has no children, it's not outputting the menu any longer. But if we navigate to about us, our menu is still in place. So that means we now have a fully functional parent child menu, and it will only display on pages where it makes sense to display. So that concludes this lesson. To review, we learned about parent pages, child pages, and we learned a lot about PHP logic and how to create our own functions. So thank you very much for watching this lesson. I hope you feel like you learned something and stay tuned for more web development and WordPress tutorials. Thanks, bye.